reputation preceded his birth. A man whose majesty simultaneously operates in the past, future, and the present. A man so powerful that even the serpent in Genesis knew his days were limited. Isaiah 53 said that this configuration of man and deity had no form of beauty that we should desire him and no majesty that we should look at him. He will be despised, rejected, and acquainted with grief, esteemed as stricken, smitten, and afflicted, yet somehow could bear my shame for my soul's relief, historically speaking. The punishment placed upon this Prince of Peace was something suited for criminals. A humiliation by crucifixion hung on display for the world to see. But prior to that inevitable march to Calvary, Jesus made his mark in history by performing miracles, signs, and wonders, and prophesying that greater work shall we do that follow him, upsetting the religious leaders as their minds cannot logically define how someone who claimed to be a priest would humble himself to help sinners. Allow me to walk through the text. Matthew chapter 8 shows Christ as the great physician, healing Peter's mother-in-law from a fever and casting out demons, manifesting the prophecy that he took on our illnesses and bore our diseases. Matthew 10 shows him as the greatest mathematician, multiplying 12 disciples into over 2 billion followers, accruing a, a following that makes social media envious. And by the time we get to chapter 14, Jesus had already managed to feed thousands of people with just two fish and five loaves of bread. Luke taught me about having faith in his word. When the commanding officer asked Jesus to heal the subordinate, the officer recognized the authority Jesus had and simply asked him to speak healing, and the request was completed before sunset. His power even oozes through the threads of his clothing. Healing a woman with a 12-year-long ailment just by her touching the hem of his garment. All four gospels told me that I was worth dying for. When I thought I was worthless, his sacrifice said that I wasn't worth less. The epitome of love personified hung, bled, and died just for the chance that we would love him back. But the story doesn't stop there. Jesus had already warned his persecutors that the tomb was incapable of holding him. Rising three days later, our champion conquered death, hell, and the grave, allowing us to be resurrected from dead works so that we can speak those things that be not as though they were, making his disciples in the earth and bringing them through the full experience of the new birth. His ascension gave us the Holy Spirit to intercede when words are absent. Understand because of this testament, you are not meant to stay bound. Colossians said that we were buried with him in baptism, wherein we are also risen. You were dead in your sin, but have been quickened together with him, having been forgiven of all trespasses and blotting out the ordinances that were placed against us. Hallelujah to our heavenly Father. Now, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Just three 